European Union, dream or nightmare? Hello and welcome to the De Giorgi Late Show. On today's show, we'll be discussing a project known as the European Union. Joining us in the studio, we're delighted to welcome Nicola James, English teacher, writer. Riccardo Aguglia, European Commission Policy Officer. Francesco Geraolo, Assistant Professor of Theatre Studies in Unisalento. Sara Montinaro, Life Watch Commission's Officer, Viola Nocente and Stefano Guido, two students from Liceo Scientifico Cosimo de Giorgi. <laughs> so, let's get started. The first question addresses the issue of being part of the European Union. We asked a cross section of European citizens what they felt were the advantages and the disadvantages of being part of this project. Let's see what they had to say. I believe that being part of the European Union, especially as a student, has many advantages. Like I can go to any other European country to pursue higher education or look for a job that is better and even travel wherever I want to. National governments still appear the figure of the external enemy to whom to blame for problems actually due to their defaults. The famous Europe asks for it has become its Europe's fault, but it's just an unfair tale invented by them to mask the need for certain uh, painful decisions just because they've never been undertaken, they haven't been undertaken for years. Diciamo che l'Europa è nata come un, uh, un grande sogno e il problema è che non si è compiuto questo sogno. Il sogno originario del, dell'Unione Europea era una eh, unione a tutti gli effetti degli Stati Uniti d'Europa e io credo che siamo a circa metà del percorso e spero che nel prossimo futuro uh, e noi, ma principalmente i ragazzi, siano, i ragazzi di oggi, siano in grado di portarlo a termine questo sogno. In mia opinione, uh, the European Dream è parte di un fallo e un successo. Ci sono diverse ragioni che hanno diverse opinioni. Sulla parte del Dream, ever since Giuseppe Mazzini and our fathers of a constitutional chart, uh, there have been supporters of the European dream uh, to you know, face up different um, uh, challenges on the part of the United States and China, both on the political side and the economical side. Uh, and it should keep mm, that way. Uh, as to the failure, uh, as, as anybody knows, uh, we don't have a, an army and we can't force a decision on a national level. Uh, so different countries may want to decide uh, things uh, not in line with the uh, European uh, Union uh, treatises uh, and directives. Allora, per me più che un grande sogno è una, una prospettiva. Io per formazione culturale, per educazione, mi sento naturalmente portata al confronto con altre culture. Penso che sia una possibilità che abbiamo come persone fondamentale, quella di incontrare gli altri e metterci in discussione e conoscere l'altro appunto. E, trovo che comunque sia un cammino ancora molto lungo da percorrere perché non ci sono ancora le basi in maniera omogenea per um, considerare questa, qual, uh, questo progetto come qualcosa di realizzabile a breve termine. So Sara, we have just watched this video. Uh, what do you personally think? Do you share all these ideas or uh, is there something you would like to add? Okay. So, thank you, and uh, yeah, I mean, like, the European Union is a reality, it's not really a dream. Uh, I mean, there are, uh, it's been, I don't know, for me, I don't know, you don't really know my background, but I've been working for uh, quite a while in Brussels for a political party, so I might have uh, some opinion, kind of a strong opinion on some of those aspects. Uh, let's say that, uh, Back in the 90s until early 2000s, there's been 
on a wave of uh, going towards a more united European Union, like getting it more as a governmental or those uh, upper level organizations. Afterwards, I could see from my perspective uh, some kind like of uh, I mean the other side of this like the union starts and like national member states and um, their national interests start arising again. Mm -hmm. So it's like you get you know like a, a path that was converging towards uh, a real union, something more like federation, although it's not the kind, and then a diverging path again giving relevance to the national identities. As, um, as far as I'm concerned, from a personal point of view, I've been benefiting from the European Union since I was a student. Like I had my Erasmus, I started working in Brussels, I still work uh, for uh, a European research consortium, so yeah, like, for me it was quite an advantage. Okay, so thanks so much. Um, Ricardo, I saw that you were uh, really interested in this. So, what's your personal idea about these topics? Okay, I, I left Italy in 2004 and I, uh, I went to, uh, to London where I started to work there. And I think this is a, a clear example of how the uh, European Union gives you chance, opportunity because you have a very big market where you can have the possibility to choose what you want in your life. It is this journey that I made that brought me, now I'm working for the European Commission in Luxembourg. And uh, uh, I found this uh, very exciting because uh, I'm working on uh, several topics that are crucial for the next, uh, 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 the next uh, programming period. You know that the, the programming period are every time seven years after seven years. So I'm working on this now. And I can see that uh, um, I, I work with the people from all over Europe, people that uh, from uh, uh, France, from Slovak, from uh, uh, Germany, from uh, uh, all, uh, a lot of countries. Uh, and this uh, gives you also the opportunity to exchange view, to have uh, a, a different perspective, and to understand uh, how uh, uh, big is uh, this, uh, 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 this market uh, and this uh, environment. OK, let's jump to the audience. Sara, do you want to say something? Uh, yes. I have a question for the panel. So uh, they spoke about uh, a United States of Europe, but uh, how united is Europe? Personally, I don't believe in the United States of Europe uh, because, of course, we refer to the United States of America, but the cultural background is totally different. Uh, when I went to Germany with the Erasmus project, I found out that every student uh, had a different point of view. And I think that uh, there are differences between the countries because uh, uh, we have a different history, a different culture. And I think that our project should not be a total union because we are different. In fact, the uh, slogan of the European Union is um, United in Diversity. So every country should maintain uh, its identity. Um, I think also that there are a lot of division now in Europe uh, because there are problems that uh, um, show uh, every uh, nationalism uh, about uh, migration, about uh, the economic problems, and of course we know that uh, a Brexit was uh, the sign of this uh, division. So, Stefan, excuse me, but um, I would like to remember you that in Italy, uh, there wasn't a referendum for the European Union. What do you think about this? Uh, I think that there wasn't a referendum because the right referendum was to uh, leave a project of Europe. Because uh, Europe has uh, always existed uh, since uh, uh, the Second World War. Because the need of uh, uh, peace, of economic cooperation, 
uh, is uh, something that uh, is part of our history. Uh, we are part of Europe since uh, the Second World War, so a referendum should uh, should be. We want to leave. Uh, uh, we want to leave uh, um, Europe. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, now I would like to talk about something that uh, in the last few years has been a really hot topic, immigration. So let's see if the audience has anything to say. Andrea? What are European countries doing to support uh, sustainable communities in Africa? Do you think uh, that uh, misery in Africa is uh, the European Union fault? Ah, uh, there are several reasons for that. Uh, for sure, uh, we have to go back to the, to the period of uh, when these countries have been colonized by uh, several European countries, including Italy. So, uh, and this maybe is in some ways, uh, uh, they uh, did something good for this country. On the other side, uh, uh, they really didn't take care uh, after this country became, uh, uh, reached their freedom and became uh, uh, democratic countries. Uh, I think uh, uh, we cannot say that the Euro, the, the, that the situation in which this country are today is a uh, uh, fault of Europe. For sure, Europe is do more to help this country. In this day and age, the EU has really lots, I would say, troubles with immigration. The countries have prom problems with immigration. Though, I do think the EU could work as a union again. Because different countries have different opinions but we all have the same goal to take on the refugees that come from countries where there's war and we need to help them on the other hand we have economic refugees on that topic we don't agree as european union countries so first of all i think we need to help the ones that are really in need that come from countries where there's war and we should have one policy not 27 or 28 different policies, one policy. I believe that immigrants that leave their country to come to Europe see Europe as a hope. No, uh, uh, most of the times they are living situations of war, danger and hunger and coming to Europe is like a dream for them. Immigrants aren't the problem in this country. They, they are a small minority compared to many countries. Being made out through folk news, fake news, to be a real problem. The issues which have been assigned to, to immigrants, like National Health Service and housing, are local parliamentary problems, not EU. 
So the problem of immigration and the increase in migration flows has required an answer from Europe on different levels. First of all, it needs policies to regulate the legal immigration and to limit the illegal one. What Europe is trying to do is to create some general rules and conditions shared by all the European countries in order to create an efficient asylum system that uh, could uh, um, be involved to, uh, to spread uh, all the immigrants uh, through the European countries. Okay, so Francesco, based on what we have seen in the video and the opinion of the audience, what do you personally think? Um, <clears throat> I mean, like many people, like I mean, many guests before, before we said, um, I, I think there are two main different levels. There's the first level, which is a, a level of personal, like a biographical uh, level, which means that, I mean, in terms of my, my bi biography, I am um, a son of the European Union. I mean, I've studied across Europe, I did my PhD in Europe, in England, in France, I, I taught in many European universities, so I, I am the prototype in, in some sense of the idea of Europe because I, I've been working and studying across Europe for, for, most, for many years of my life. In but in terms of, um, uh, generally speaking, I do realize that Europe is it's a complex issue because, of course, we are very small. It's a very small continent I mean, compared to other continents, compared to most of the other continents. But at the same time, it, it's very different it, within the European continent. I mean, na nation, nation-wise, is very different. So it's, it's different in terms of cultures, languages, e economies. So it's not. It, this is not. An, it's not easy. I mean, there. Are, so it's very. I think Europe is our present and our future. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But it, it's a complex issue, definitely. And, but if I just to say something about the immigration, I think the European countries uh, uh, have to uh, have to um, uh, have the, mo the moral the moral uh, um, um, duty. Duty, sorry. have the moral duty to uh, host these people. That's something that cannot be negotiated. I mean, there's no negotiation to be done, but we know what's the policy, especially of Eastern European countries and, and also the, the UK in terms of immigration, which is very, very wrong and very, very and has to be uh, condemned completely. Okay, thank you. Now, I think that this topic is closed to Nicolette's art. Nicolette, how do you feel about Brexit? <laughs> I was hoping you weren't going to ask me. Um, I happen to be in Britain the day that the decision was taken and I turned on my phone, I was staying with friends, and when I read it, I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely amazed. Um, the question is much more complex than people think. Um, we know that during the campaign, everybody talked about the negative aspects of uh, Europe, very few people said anything about the positive aspects. A lot of lies were told, especially by people like Farage and things like that. Um, within, within the population itself, it's very curious because Britain had a huge wave of immigration long before the European Union. Uh, in the 1950s, uh, when I was a child, we had some of the first immigration from Jamaica, the West Indies, and it continued from Africa, but also particularly from Pakistan, India. So when this question of immigration became so, shall we say, hot in England, I was surprised because I thought, well, we've had, all these, we've had thousands and thousands of immigrants. Why are they now making a fuss? about what I consider to be quite a small number of immigrants coming mainly from Poland and Hungary and places like that. Um, so that was one aspect. If I tell you something about my own family, um, it's rather strange because on my mother's side, my family was not English. Uh, my, uh, my grandfather was Swiss French. My great-grandfather was Swiss German. 
Uh, my mother, her first language was French, but she was born in England, and so on and so forth. So we are very European on one side. So when I discovered that my sister had voted for Brexit, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and this is typical of what happened in England. Um, another friend of mine, whose mother was equally Swiss, um, he was about to vote for Brexit. Fortunately, his wife, who's an intelligent person, said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm voting because these European polit politicians take so much money. Well, it's probably true, but the British politicians take quite a lot of money as well. So, um, Brexit is not simple. And I think you have to add to this a rather island mentality, uh, which is something that you find in Sardinia very often. Um, very similar, this sort of, you know, we are an island, uh, we don't have anything to do that. Add to this that, as they say, a lot of the people who voted for Brexit were over a certain age. Um, I actually play the equivalent of Scrabble on Facebook with a lady who's probably about 10 years older than me. And she was furious because I was posting things uh, that were anti-Brexit. And um, she said, oh, but we, we won the war. Why should we, we be told what to do by the Germans? And this is the mentality of quite a lot of elderly people. Um, I didn't live through the war, so I, I can't really say anything. I do find the whole question very, very complex, very difficult. And um, people surprise me. Um, I, I'm totally in favor of Europe. And when I came to teach in this school, um, we had difficulty because the only teacher who was trying to get involved in things with Europe who was um, Mr. Gerizzi, we were blocked by the fact that a lot of the information stopped at Bari. And it was only really when technology came along and we could access it ourselves online that we actually managed to start doing things um, shall we say, taking advantage of the European system. And I would say, um, thanks also to my colleague Patricia Sangodolce, uh, this school has had great advantages from Europe. So obviously I'm in favour of Brexit. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in favour of Brexit, I'm against it. But I think it's not a simple question. Okay, Nicola, thank you for your response. And just Stefano, what do you think about Brexit? Um, I think that when we analyze this problem, uh, we only consider the economical point of view. And of course, I'm not an economist, so I don't want to do this kind of analysis. And I think that we should consider the fact that uh, um, Europe needs peace, needs uh, cooperation about uh, problems like uh, we see in immigration. So, um, I think that uh, Brexit uh, is a big problem from a cultural point of view. Now, of course, uh, uh, England is facing these problems from the economical point of view, but I think that in few oh, years... But if you're not English, how do you know that in England uh, there are effective problems? Okay, I'm not an economist, of course, so I cannot answer uh, properly, but uh, um, from the news that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, read in, by the international uh, agency, I read that there, were, there, there are these problems. And of course, we can notice these difficulties from the fact that they uh, cannot find uh, a deal about... Uh, and if the news are fake? <laughs> it depends uh, from where you read the news and uh, from uh, this kind of agency and uh, from official uh, uh, sources, we can say that they are true. And of course, uh, um, the parliament is a real place, and if the parliament, which is a real place, uh, cannot, found, uh, uh, cannot find a uh, deal, I think that uh, uh, this date is objective. Uh, it doesn't need any interpretation. Okay, thank you all. Now let's see if your opinions are shared across Europe. Some of the reasons which led to Brexit I think were sort of nationalistic views by sort of the older generation. I think perhaps they felt that they just wanted to keep their country to themselves and they didn't want um, foreigners maybe to come in. So it was, so if we exited, so Brexit, if it happened, it would make it harder for them to come in so they'd have to work harder. And also I think 
leading to Brexit. I think also the European Union had quite a big influence on the laws that we have here because we were all together. And so I think the UK wanted a bit more independence. Um, I mean, the same reasons we're living right here in Italy right now, and it's a general sense of dissatisfaction, I think. Uh, but that sense of dissatisfaction is part of history. You should digest it as, as a country and work from it, not be impinged or limited by it. Do you understand? I don't think many people would disagree with the idea that it was done to try and preserve the Conservative Party because the UK Independence Party was stealing their votes. And they were only a small minority, but they were enough to stop the Conservatives having MPs in Parliament. Mm. So it could, could mean that another party got in because they weren't being... They what they tried to do was to get rid of the threat of UKIP, UK Independence Party, and it backfired badly because they thought everyone was in favour of remaining in the EU. A lot of the reasons people voted for Brexit where so a lot of it was to do with immigrants and the immigration into Britain people wanted to stem the flow of immigrants and to do with having to pay for EU membership as well but with the Brexit deal that we're it looks like we're going to get now or not people aren't getting what they voted for they aren't getting what they wanted so if there was a second referendum I think a lot of people would vote the other way because they aren't going to get out of this um, exiting the EU what the aim was initially. So um, that's a great question about l my life after Brexit. Uh, unfortunately, I think it will have a significant impact and it always, already has had a big impact. Um, in the UK, all of our families are 800 uh, pounds or euros a month worse off, which is, which is not good. Uh, one of the big changes has been the fall in the value of the pound, uh, which means that everything we import is expensive and 60% of our food we import, so that's, that's not a good situation. Um, I think also um, what we're finding, as well as um, economic difficulties, um, is uh, firms pulling out of the UK. Already we have large companies like uh, Nissan and Honda moving uh, out of out of the UK causing uh, causing unemployment and affecting our families um, one of the reasons the UK has done so well is that we're an English speaking country and that does matter internationally and a lot of com a lot of companies have established headquarters here because they can import and deal with the whole EU very easily. If we leave the EU, that's one of the main reasons for those countries to leave in a way. So a major part of our economy is car manufacture and already there are signs that car manufacturers are thinking of leaving or reducing some of their production and it's going to increase prosperous. Whatever happens, whether there's no tariff well, there is a tariff, in other words, taxes when you move across borders. Um, there's damage. We, we will suffer economically, there's no doubt about it. Um, I wouldn't say, there are some people who genuinely and very fiercely want Brexit. Don't forget, they won the vote. But I think people have changed their minds. They see that a hard Brexit would do a lot of harm. Mm. The, there is an old saying in English that the, the devil has the best views and in the case of Brexit they managed to use some catchphrases which everybody would agree with to some extent and that's caused the reaction we've had. The people who are defending the European Union are very poor at it, they're not very good. There's a lot to be said for the European Union. I could speak for hours on it. Um, I, I love the European Union. It's got faults, but so is every other organization. But it's far better. We stick together as a European community and isolate ourselves. 
The Brexit chaos isn't over yet. And now the question is, should there be a Nexit? What would happen if our country, the Netherlands, would leave the EU? I think we wouldn't exist anymore. As in, we are just a small country, our economy is strong, but all we need to do is cooperate with all the countries that employ us, or which we have trade agreements with. So we cannot live without other countries. We need to cooperate in a larger system, as is the EU. We can sort things out uh, when it comes to regulation on our own, but you can only make an impact when you are larger than just one. Uh, there are no advantages, to be honest. So everything would be a disadvantage, basically. There are no advantages of leaving Europe. I mean, even Italy, if Italy left Europe right now, I mean, there's been that kind of talk, but um, it would be a tremendous mistake. I mean, uh, if you're not in Europe right now, um, you, 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 you're dead as a country from a political, a social, a cultural and historical standpoint. Okay, so we have watched this video. Is there anybody in the audience who wants to make any question about it? Kevin? Okay. So. My question is uh, if um, a Brexit could spread. Well, um, when I heard about Brexit, I remember I was in the car with my parents, actually, and I was scrolling to the feed on Twitter, and I heard that Brexit was for real. It was real, it was happening, and I couldn't believe it, because when I thought about me in the future, I saw myself in Britain, student at university, and when I heard about Brexit, I was like, oh, okay, so it, it may not happen. And uh, I honestly couldn't believe it. And the second thing that I asked myself was, well, okay, so this happened, and can it affect, and how will it, it will affect my country too? Because um, I, as the people in the video said, I think that the main issue about Brexit was that a lot of people, that I mean, a lot of uh, elder people voted instead of young people. I think that uh, younger people had the opportunity to um, maybe express their thoughts in a way. And this is a huge issue because I think that the future of the country and every country in the world is the young people. So I th I, as I see it as a student, or as I see it as a student, we are the future of Europe. So um, I think that they should have considered it when thinking about Brexit. What is going to happen after Brexit for our um, students, either in high school or in universities? So, yeah, as I said, the second thing that I thought is, it was, uh, is it going to affect my country too? And I see a lot of people, and I hear a lot of people, even today, after a lot of time, that want Italy to leave Europe. And the thing that I, it is a thing that I cannot understand. Like, how can you possibly think about your country in Europe? Like it is the union that made us live in peace for a lot of years and I don't want to renounce to that peace and I don't want to renounce to the place that I have right now because uh, Europe gives me a lot of different opportunities. I get the opportunity to meet people from all over the world and I get the opportunity to study wherever I want and what I want and to uh, get uh, I mean, a decent job, get a decent position and I mean, I still have to find my, my place in the world, but the thing that I know for sure is that I don't want Italy or any other country to leave Europe. Because I think it's what um, we do better when we stick together. Okay, thank you so much, Joa. So, in reconnecting uh, on this, uh, I would like to remember you that a lot of extreme political uh, Malaysianist ideas uh, are taking place in all the world. What do you think about this? Well, um, it's, um, I see a lot of people that pretend that this position do not exist. And these positions do exist, but I think we must not listen to them. 
Um, I have a strong opinion um, on the European Union and uh, what I see in the future. And I think that um, these people are considering it from an, an economical point of view. Because I think nowadays we just think about money. Like, one of the main issues in the world, I think, is that we think way too much about economy, about money. We are obsessed, obsessed with material things. So I think they are seeing it from an economical point of view rather than a human point of view. Um, again, reconnecting with the, with the situation on immigrants. Like, how can you not make these people enter in your country? Uh, these people are the same people that say that these people should not enter in a country. Like, how can, how can you not get these people, like, uh, actually, kind of, how can you not take care of these people? Because they come to Europe seeing it as a home, as a girl said in the video, like, they are hopeful about their future. And I think that, um, as human beings, not as citizens, but as human beings, we should really take care of these people, not letting them out. Because they come from a situation where there's war, when the, there are a lot of difficulties in their countries, so maybe they see us as a possibility to start a new life. So um, yeah, they exist, but I think that we should not listen to them. We should fight them with as many um, with as many people as uh, as possible. Uh, I think it should start from the young from the young people. Well, I see actually a lot of young people campaigning against this position. Um, well, I think that we should um, actually get to the point where we all go against them because they're not, uh, I think, the right opinions. So we're saying uh, yeah. uh, about migration, uh, yeah. we know that the situation in countries like Malta or Italy is different from the situation uh, in, the, in Austria. Yeah, well, um, as talking about yeah, migrants, um, I think there are some countries that have, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a truth actually, some countries have you know, uh, more possibilities than others to actually um, make uh, migrants come into the countries. Like you mentioned Austria, but uh, also Germany actually. Well at the same time, I see these countries that have uh, a lot of possibility, possibility, possibilities not taking care of the problem. And I think that Italy did a lot and is still doing a lot. I think we should improve on this, but everybody should actually improve on this. So there's not a perfection point. I don't think that this, we will get to a point where we will, where we will say, okay, now we're doing, uh, we're following the perfect method to make these people come. Uh, so yeah, there are some countries that have more possibilities than Italy, for example. And so I think that they should improve on what they're doing, I mean, they should do better, but at the same time, I don't actually think it's, it's, it's not a fault. I don't see it as, as a fault of this country. I'm just saying that it should focus more on this problem and a lot of other problems that are real. It's reality. This is what happens every day. So, uh, yeah, I think that there should be um, a, a major improvement uh, for this situation coming from our country and every other country. Okay, thank you so much, Joa. So, Stefano, now I have a question for you. Stefano, do you like traveling? Yeah, I like it. Hmm, so, do you ever heard about uh, a project called Erasmus Plus? Sure, I have a really interesting video clip about it. Exchange projects. The way for students from different countries of the European Union and other countries to engage. Because you can learn languages and cultures through books, through TV series, through films. But the only best way to know each other is in person. Therefore, I think it's very good. And we are grateful that the EU funds several types of exchange projects. And please continue to do this, and to schools and teachers and students, please continue to participate. Um, the, the main scheme for supporting education 
uh, in the European Union is Erasmus Plus, and that's existed for many years. Um, I have a niece who was who spent a year in Germany in a German university as part of that Erasmus scheme, and. Although the British government has said we want these schemes to continue, it does present problems. And already I know university students are having difficulty deciding on courses because they're not sure Erasmus will continue. They don't know if they will be financed. And I think it's one of the, the Erasmus University team, one of the finest things we have. It's a little gem. And it really helps people like you to get wider experience of other countries, and I think that's vital. I am sitting here because I had the opportunity to visit other countries when I was at school. Not everybody had that. And it changed my view of foreigners. You know, they weren't foreign, they're just different people. They're in a different country. Well, I believe the exchange projects are essential for every European student. I was part of an exchange project and it helped me so much in learning about new culture. Uh, I believe that every student needs to be a part of at least one exchange project because it creates uh, tolerance and acceptance to new cultures. So uh, I have done the, my degree in, uh, in the University of Salento in, uh, in the Department of Mathematics and Physics and then later on the PhD in Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Germany. And uh, my preparation has been great to uh, face all the challenges of um, the course of studies to become a scientist later on um, in the US and be involved in several spacecraft missions. Uh, therefore, I think that Europe offers students uh, great opportunities and it's up to students to take these challenges and these opportunities to make the best uh, out of them. For sure, I encourage Italy and I would like Italy uh, to offer more opportunities and investments for science such that uh, not the future younger generations will not be faced toward the, um, the, the, the challenge of going abroad and uh, miss uh, the native land as I, as I have experienced. Um, but in terms of preparation, I think Europe offers a lot for students. Stefano and Viola, this is a part that uh, I wanted to reserve uh, for you mainly because you are two students and uh, you are more connected to this kind of projects. So what do you think about uh, Erasmus Plus project? So uh, I think that uh, the Erasmus projects are essential in uh, our education. Uh, last year I went uh, um, on Germany um, with the school of course and uh, I took part in the Global Competency uh, Training and Framework uh, Training Program and uh, it was uh, a great opportunity uh, except from uh, uh, only uh, the project because uh, I met new people, I met in France and now I'm in contact with people from Spain and Germany so it was also an opportunity to, um, uh, to uh, train my language, of course my English and of course there we understood that uh, every problem of, that affects Europe but in, world, in general the world uh, cannot be considered from uh, the point of view of a single nation but every problem should uh, be solved and analyzed from uh, an European and global point of view so uh, for this reason uh, the young people that of course probably and uh, uh, we hope that we will solve uh, the problems uh, should have this vision, this perspective, a uh, global perspective, because uh, every problem like uh, the environmental problems, but also uh, immigration, uh, um, economy, of course now uh, they are founded on uh, relationship between countries. So, uh, of course, uh, these projects are essential for this reason, in my opinion. Yeah, and I actually cannot speak from um, a personal point of view because I've never been on uh, a Erasmus Plus project, but I can speak. Um, I, I, actually, I can actually tell you about what happened um, when uh, we um, 
presented the concert at Leipzig on the 15th of February. And all the people from different schools came in Leipzig, and I think you know it, but um, it was, I think, and I still look at it as, and I think, and I will always think uh, of it as one of the greatest opportunities of my life, because it did not only make me um, speak in English, which is uh, one of my favorite languages, and you know, it, it helped me progress a lot, but it also made me, made me mad maybe met my meet a lot of people that came from different countries and from Spain for example we happened to be, we did actually a tour guide of Leche for these people and uh, it was so fun and I asked them about what they knew about Leche, if they knew anything about it and I actually made some uh, Spanish friends and um, I happened to be still in contact with them on Instagram and so it was it was amazing to listen to other stories about how they looked at other city and if they had been on other trips, if they did other projects and also it was really cool to kind of um, face some issues of course uh, of Europe um, because it's important to actually um, think about it as a problem that everybody has so Europe has a lot of issues and when I spoke to these people we had a lot of different opinions but it was um, great to know about them because they made me see these problems from a different point of view. So yeah, it was a really great opportunity and as you know, we presented the concert, uh, it made me feel like I was, in that moment I felt like I was connecting a lot of different people. Um, by speaking a universal language that is English and also speaking another language that in the concert of course music. So yeah, it was, was great. Yes, we uh, were born in the uh, um, European Union, so for us it's normal to travel around Europe and um, of course uh, uh, it was also an opportunity to understand which ideas of the other countries are real because there are a lot of fake news and uh, uh, for this reason, uh, I could uh, uh, have a meeting with other people and from other countries, and uh, I found out that a lot of concepts of um, ideas that uh, arrived from uh, um, from journalists or from the internet are false. And of course, uh, it was also a great opportunity to uh, improve the problems of uh, um, our country. For instance, when uh, uh, Spanish students came in our, our school. Uh, of course, uh, he said that uh, this school is different from uh, its school, so he uh, gave me a lot of advice uh, uh, about it. So, uh, I think that uh, be having uh, um, an external point of view from an external person is uh, very important and uh, help us to face the problems of the future. Okay, now I have... Um Last question uh, about Erasmus projects. So, Nicolette, uh, probably going to London uh, uh, may require a visa. Do you think that London has the real quality to make people say, I have absolutely to go to London? <laughs> well, people went to London long before the European Union, I have to say. Um, yes, I don't think it will be a problem. I think they, I think. I think the problems concerning visas, passports, that sort of thing, are the most unimportant questions of, of the whole Brexit question. I think what Malcolm Moss said, a lot of those are very important, that a lot of companies are moving out of Britain and that sort of thing. One of the biggest problems is the question of customs duties. Um, on the radio I heard this lady who has a flower shop somewhere in London and she said, I import almost all my flowers from Holland. She says, if they decide that there's going to be a sort of hold up, every time something comes into Britain they're going to stop and check, well the flowers will be dead. Um, I can't sell dead flowers. So uh, this is a very, very important question. Not to, we mustn't forget either the Irish question yeah. of the border there because that, that's what's blocking a lot of things as well. Yes, I think your people will continue to go there, uh, regardless of Brexit. <laughs> and, um, I mean, people go to so many other countries, cities in the world, uh, even though it's quite hard to go there. Uh, so, yes, definitely. 
Thank you so much, Nicolette. So guys, uh, is anybody there in the audience who wanted to ask any question about Erasmus Plus projects? Okay, so. Is it possible for young people with a little qualification to access the Erasmus scheme? If Erasmus uh, uh, is, uh, is open to uh, all, uh, all kinds of, uh, of situation, and is, is a way also to improve your qualification, your ability to uh, uh, cope with different uh, uh, argument and matters. So I think, uh, yes, is a, is a, there is no uh, uh, barrier in, the, in that respect. Uh, uh, I think that in general, Erasmus is something that uh, I really encourage you if you have uh, the opportunity to do, because it is something that uh, uh, there is a research that has been done uh, in, the, in the European Commission, and uh, according to this research, people that spend time abroad uh, during uh, this uh, Erasmus uh, uh, period, they got a job, today they, they have a, a better job and earn more than people that didn't do that. So it's, it's an opportunity to really have uh, a, 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 an increased uh, um, chance to, to have success in your working life. After. Thank you so much, Ricardo. So guys, so the European dream, the immigration, Brexit, and Erasmus. There's a lot of things about we can talk now, but uh, we don't have more time. Before we left, I wanted to leave you with a question. If Europe was a club, would you want to join it? <laughs> Thank you so much, and goodbye.